Hey guys, the American Reenactor here, and I'm just gonna go over um, what I got for my Korean War impression, my new stuff I got for it. So, I'm just gonna go to this new stuff over here. I have this 1953 dated uh, mirror canteen. I don't have a pouch yet for it, but there is. Uh, one of my favorite surplus stores here in Austin, the owner said he's going to that military show in Kentucky that just happened, the show of shows or something, and he said he's getting, he's going to try and get some more canvas pouches, all he had was the 80s nylon stuff, but soon I'll have a pouch for that, here's a broken shovel case, 1958 dated, see it doesn't look broken, the leather is really nice, it's just the button here is broken. It won't go on. Well, yeah, it's 1958 dated. You can't really see it, but there's 1958. And then here's a M1 case cleaning rod M1 Look forward to era, but I'm just going to use it here. And then this I got this today. It's M1903 Springfield replica by Paris Rifles. It's the training rifle, Cadets of America, so it's the toy version. But it's just a stand-in until I get an M1 Grand or a um, uh, M1 Carbine. See, it has a bolt. I'm trying to open it. There we go. See, it's got the wood bullet <clears throat> right there. And it pushes in with a spring. It pushes in with a spring right there. Then it closes. Uh, this thing is really beat up though. Because it's missing its trigger guard, its sling, and this front metal part here. The bayonet's gone. Still got the bayonet hook. And it's just beat up overall. This it's held together with double sided tape. Cuts the um you now I saw the screws was in there. Right there. But the holes are so big from it being used so much that the screws won't stay in by themselves. So I'd uh use double sided tape just to get this thing to stay in. That's what I use for now, though. It's a nice rifle, even though it's so beat up. And then, let me move this stuff out of the way. This is 1956 dated. Oh, here, let me go over this. It's a model, model 1949, manufactured by Superior Magnetical Corp, L.I. City, New York, 1953 dated. February 1953. So that's part of my Korean War impression. It's the compass. It's the wrist compass. I can open this. Sorry. There you go. It's broken though. Okay, here's a 1956 dated M1 Garam bandolier. It still works, so that's why I'm using it. I have two clips. The one with K98 ammo, it fits, got it from a reenactment, and M1 Garand ammo. M1 Garand is the same as an M60, so, fun fact. This is my M53 uh, field jacket, it's a little beat up, has no tags, figured out it was an M53 by myself, no year, so. But in this pocket, I have some shoe doubling, because why not, if you're a marine, you'd use it. If you're a Marine in World War II, uh, or uh, Army with the double buckle, if you're in World War II, or Marines in Korea, you'd have that, but this is an Army impression, as you can see. Army, Army. In this pocket, I have that mail thing. That was in my last video. In this pocket, I have this can, which is also in my last video. This can, well, tin can has just Korean War military money. 
and then a Korean War bandage. And then over here, this is the helmet that I did a trade with for um, Rockingham Military and Antiques. And by the way, I'm going to the post office tomorrow to ship the box. To ship the box, I haven't been able to go to the post office yet. My bad. And today, I got this just today. And when I got home, I figured out it's not an original. I didn't examine it close enough. Can't get it out. There we go. I didn't examine it close enough. I don't know, that the place. See there, it's missing the hole right there. But I'm using it for now because it's just what I have. I haven't adjusted it to fit me yet. I mean, I've tried to, you see, it's all loose, but these won't move, so I'm currently trying to take them off, which is extremely hard. So I think this is either European, or just a really bad reproduction. Missing an ape strap and the liner chin strap. Let me know if I should paint it or not. I kind of like it like this, but yeah, let me know if I should paint it. This is more of like the field gear area, all that there. And over here is like just the personal stuff. Like you got a sewing kit right here, which I don't even know. It has Velcro in it, so I don't know if it's Korea or newer. And then here's a 1944 dated mess, mess kit. I don't have a World War II impression, so that's why I'm using it. And there I only have a knife. And then, um, oh, and also, about this, I have this because it was a training rifle during World War II. That's what's called a trainer rifle. So, that's a little history used by the Marines. Or just really anybody, I think. I think it was mainly used by the Marines during training. This one is extremely beat up. That's that. Oh, but I went to this monthly flea market that I'm going to start going to normally. And um, that's where I got this trainer rifle for a 10 bucks deal. And then this liner. Got this liner once I get it out. Something. Well, it's five bucks. She said it's five bucks because it has no paint on it. Yeah. Scratch the paint. <coughs> paint. But yeah. I didn't really examine it at all, so it's not an original. See, the webbing is like OD7 and khaki. So, that's odd. But, um, Jack Northen, not to be rude or anything, but he was saying that, um, M53s were not used in the Korean War. Well, that is a lie. If you search up Korean War photos, you can specifically see M53s being used. See, it has the, uh, buttons underneath here, and it doesn't have the brown buttons like this. It's got these green buttons, everything was starting to get newer. And then it also, the M65 has a hoodie attached and you attach this part, the collar with Velcro. You don't do that. And then you can attach this down here to keep the collar down. Well, attach this to here and that one to here to keep the collar down. And then that was, this was attached there. And I don't really know where this was attached. But yeah, M53s, were used in the Korean War. So you can use them in a Korean War impression. That's that's for you, Jack Northen. And then, I don't know what this is called. Um, so please comment about that. And then, this is from my dad's friend's grandpa. So it's from the, it's from the 50s or later. So... Just have in there tops. I use this on 
my guns currently. Well, newer one. That one's almost empty. Here's for good conduct. I think. Yeah, this is a Korean War era medal. And then in this pocket, if I can get it undone here with one hand. Okay, down this pocket, I have another letter, just like a wallet to make it look old. It's just a picture of a kid. It's just some foreign money. He got, uh, I think, Cuban and then Vietnamese. Just to make it seem like a wallet that you have to use in a foreign country just to fill the pockets, you know. And, uh, Um, in this pocket, I think I just have that pack of camels. Alright, I can't open it, but there's just the pack of camels and the... Wait, okay, there we go. Yeah, the pack of camels and the, um, Strategic Air Command Zippo Lighter, which... I have gotten to rotate, but it still won't light. So, don't know what's up with that. And, um, yeah, that's, that's it, really. Like, there's no tags on this, so if y'all could really help me out on this, please comment about this. All right. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.